Welcome everyone as we are here live at Westmoreland County Community College for the first ever Westmoreland County Youth Summit. This is all a part of the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission along with the CSA Youth Program that has been established here in the local communities as we're trying to prevent students from alcohol and drug abuse. I'm Seth Prentice, a member of the CSA Coalition and as well part of Armstrong here as we're helping to sponsor the many events that these students are doing and getting involved with. Today you will see a comedian, a drum uh, breakout session as well with Jim Donovan from Rusted Root along with a couple student interviews. We hope you enjoy as 22 schools are here today for this program. My name is Colleen Hughes. Good morning everyone. I am the executive director of the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission and on behalf of the Council on Substance Abuse and Youth, which you all know is CSA, welcome to the inaugural Youth Summit. We are so excited that all of you are here today, this morning, the whole entire day, and we are really looking forward to this event. Um, at 22 schools from throughout Westmoreland County, are here today. I think um, Belle Vernon, unfortunately, is not going to be able to join us because of some uh, water issues. But otherwise, this is the first time in a long time that we have had 22 schools throughout Westmoreland County participate in this type of event. So we are really happy that all of you were able to join us and um, be able to look forward to this really exciting day that we have planned for you ahead. Um, this kind of commitment from our school truly personifies the summit's theme, to see the change, you have to be the change, and demonstrates the dedication of the youth here today to work hand in hand to create positive change in their schools and communities. So for all of you students out, here, out there, please repeat after me. To see the change, see the change. you have to be the change. Okay, come on, I can't hear you. To see the change, see the change. You, have to be the change. you have to be the change. Okay, one more time. To see the change, see the change. You, have to be the change. you have to be the change. All right, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. Yay, come on, enthusiastic. You're enthusiastic, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission, otherwise known as WEDAC, we were awarded the, the Drug Free Communities Grant back in October of 2014, and we have been working tirelessly in collaboration with CSA on the planning and imp implementation of the grant's numerous initiatives to reduce alcohol use among persons 12 through 18 and reduce prescription drug abuse among persons aged 12 through 18. So um, the dedicated members of CSA have offered their time and professional knowledge to help work toward meeting the goals of the DFC grant and reduce alcohol and substance use among youth. WEDAC is very grateful for the efforts of the coalition and specifically the Youth Summit Committee's work to make today possible. At this time, I would like to take a few minutes to introduce, introduce those com committee members. First and foremost, Tracy Cremonese and Michelle Wenzel from Westmoreland County Juvenile Probation. Can you please stand? Are they out, are they out back? Oh, there's Michelle, okay, thank you. Um, Tracy Brown and Jen Miller from Outside In. It's Tracy and Jen, there's, there's Jen Miller, there's Tracy, all right. Donna Keene and Beth Joseph from St. Vincent College Prevention Projects. There, okay, there they are. And now, last but not least, um, from the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission, and we could not do this without Jamie Lloyd, right over here, Julie Robach, and Matt Byron. So thank you all for the staff um, and all of the committee members. Um, also, we have some of our CSA members here with us today. So when I call your name, please stand if, if you are here. And I'm not sure if they're all here yet, but we have Carmen Composi and Cindy Knoll from Sage's Army. I'm not sure if they're here yet. Um, Teresa Madsen from Adelphi. Teresa, I don't know, if, there she is. Okay, great. Um, Bob Errett, Bob, he's back there. Uh, Patty Graff from Penn State. There you are, Patty, thanks. Um, Chuck Chapel, Community Prevention. 
Renee Kelly from Community Convention, Prevention, Marge Markovich. She's one of our community members. Thanks, Marge. Um, Danielle Kosnowski. I'm not sure where Danielle is. Seth Prentice. There's Seth. And Teresa Say. There's Teresa. Thank you. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you. OK, a couple more acknowledgments, and then the fun can begin. I also would like to acknowledge WEDAC board members, Sherry Anderson and Dr. Stephen Sellup. There's Dr. Sellups back there, and Sherry Anderson, not sure where she's at. And last but not least, uh, we'd like to welcome Mary Hickok from the Department of Drug and Alcohol Programs. There's Mary back there. She came all the way from Harrisburg to be with you guys today. So thank you, everyone. At this time, I would like to introduce Jamie Lloyd again, and she is going to give you some information about the rest of today. Hi, I'm Jamie Lloyd, and I'm with Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission. So I'm just going to go over a couple items. Um, you all received a bag and t-shirts and name tags. So advisors, there's a binder, there's one binder in the bag per school. I think Hempfield has a couple binders. Um, in those binders, if you just want to hang on to those throughout the day, there's going to be some planning forms in them. There's an agenda. There's also an agenda on back of your, everybody's name tag. Um, we're going to try to stick to this the best we can. And then there's some other, there's resource guides in there. There's a grant application. Um, so kind of just listen for direction on where to go with those binders. Other things, if you need to go to the bathroom or step out, there's no designated break time. So kind of just step out. You guys are old enough to be quiet. <laughs> so step out, come back in. Try to keep your phones put away just out of respect, just normal rules like that. Um, and then after, between each session, we'll kind of announce, either have Craig announce or I'll announce on where we're going to go next. So we're going to start the day in here. And we have an um, opening keynote speaker. And then we'll, from here, we'll kind of direct you where to go. We're going to head over to the other building for some breakout sessions and lunch and stuff like that. So um, if anyone has any questions, all of the people that have staff on their name tag and <coughs> kind of sitting back here, you can ask any of us those questions. So if you have any questions throughout the day, let us know. If you need anything, let us know. And so we have a keynote speaker slash comedian for you guys this morning. His name is Craig Tornquist. So Craig Tornquist, um, so he has performed more than 3,000 stand-up comedy shows across the country. He has warmed up concert crowds for Jay Leno and many others. So today he's here to walk us through his comedy career, which began when he was a student and it can encourage us to pursue our own dreams. So we have to give a round of applause and welcome Craig Tornquist. How about a hand for Jamie, everybody? Thank you, Jamie. Good morning, Westmoreland County. It is great to be back in Pennsylvania. I drove 400 miles yesterday just to come here and spend the day with you folks. I live in Mishawaka, Indiana, uh, and uh, I am a stand-up comedian. Now, Jamie told you a little bit about me. Uh, for those of you who have never seen my show before, I do uh, some songs, uh, celebrity impressions, and I love audience participation. In fact, I am hoping to meet several of you up here on this stage in just a couple of minutes. Now, I love to do shows for high school students in particular because I was exactly your age when I first thought, you know, this is what I want to do for a job someday. Comedy, however, is not the first thing I tried. I wanted more than anything else when I was a teenager to be an athlete, a jock, a stud. There was one minor problem, however. I got cut from every single team I ever tried out for. And eventually, I got so depressed that I did something I'm not terribly proud of. I joined a gang. Now, usually when I tell students that, most of them look at me and they say, you know, Craig, you really don't look like any gangster we've ever seen on television. But it's true. I ran with a group of young men who did a lot with fire, we did a lot with weapons. We had our own signs, our own caps, our own colors, everything. In fact, we were famous. Some of you may even recognize the gang of which I was a part. I'm not proud of this, but it's true. I was a homeboy scout. And some of my all-time favorite memories are when I used to sit around a campfire with the other homeboy scouts and we'd sing songs, we'd rap tunes, we were bad, we were the Homeboy Scouts. And right now I'd like to rap for you one of my all-time favorite Homeboy Scout songs. This is entitled simply, 
She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Yo, yo. Coming round the mountain when she comes, yo yo. She be coming round the mountain when she comes, yo yo. She be coming round the mountain and my posse will be shouting. She be coming round the mountain when she comes, yo yo. Oh, we were lowering not to meet her when she comes. What's up? We were lowering not to meet her when she comes. What's up? We were lowering not to meet her. We'll say what's up when we greet her. We were lowering not to meet her when she comes. What's up, yo yo? <laughs> oh, we will gank the rooster's head when she comes. Hammer time. We will gank the rooster's head when she comes. Hammer time. We will gank the rooster's head. Leave it chilling till it's dead. We will gank the rooster's head when she comes. Hammer time. What's up, yo, yo? <laughs> she will have to sleep with grandma when she comes. <laughs> she will have to sleep with grandma when she comes. <laughs> And my homie will be illin', cause grandma's worth his chillin'. She will have to sleep with grandma when she comes. <laughs> Have a time, what's up, yo, yo? <laughs> okay, all you rap fans, rap along, you know the words. She be coming round the mountain when she comes. Yo, yo. She be coming round the mountain when she comes. Yo, yo. She be coming round the mountain, and my posse will be shoutin'. She be coming round the mountain when she comes. <laughs> Have a time, what's up, yo, yo? Very good. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you, it's a gift, thank you so much. Well, I didn't last long in the Homeboy Scouts. In fact, they kicked me out shortly after I wrote that rap. And my quest continued. By the time I got to the spring of my eighth grade year, I didn't think I was ever going to be good at anything. But my life changed one very normal day. When I came into school, one of my favorite teachers came up and she said, Craig, have you seen the bulletin board? No. She said, we're gonna have a talent show and I want you to try out. I said, are you crazy? She said, no, come on, Craig. You're gifted and talented and I want you to use your gifts and talents on stage. Well, she knew that I'd been working on some celebrity impressions and I thought, okay, there is no way in this world that I'm gonna get up on that stage and sing as myself. But perhaps if I got up and sang like someone else, it might not be so frightening. So I auditioned, I made the show, and I want to perform for you the very first voice I ever did. Now, a lot of people think that this guy died a long time ago. Others, however, still simply regard him as the one who started it all. Would you please welcome? Live from the grave. The one they still call the king. <laughs> Mr. Elvis Presley, here we go, baby. Even though know, I have been found Sitting home all alone If you can't call the rap At least we tell home I don't be cruel to this old fool I don't want no other Oh baby, it's just you I'm thinking of I'm coming after you, darling Take my hand Take my red star too Here we go, darling For I, for I I can't help a falling in love that's it, don't fight it, sweetheart. For I, for I, I can't help a falling in love. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who hurt you? Ha! I'm in love. Oh, are you? Elvis Wrestling. Thank you, and please give her a round of applause for not slapping me. <laughs> well, that was it. Applause. For the first time in my life that night, I got a round of applause. And it 
felt great. And that is the night that I finally discovered my talent. It's making people laugh. Now, what I've learned since then is that everybody in this world has got a talent. You were born with it. The question is, how do you discover yours? Well, that's one of the things that high school is all about. This is the perfect time in life for you to discover your gifts and your talents. But if you're going to do that, you need to have a couple of qualities which all of my favorite comedians share in common. The first one is you got to become a risk taker. Now, when you're in high school, there are main opportunities for you to take smart risks and there are main opportunities for you to take stupid risks. A smart risk is when you're sitting in the classroom and you hear on the announcements that we're going to have auditions for a show or tryouts for a team or there's a club or an organization or we're looking for some people to go to a first ever youth summit. And you're sitting there thinking, oh man, I have no idea whether or not I'll be good at that. It's school, it's a safe place, there's only one way to find out, that's to take a risk and say, you know, I'm gonna give it a shot. Right now I've got an opportunity for every person in this room to take a risk. I would like to invite you all to play a game with me that I have played with high school students all over the country. And I love this game because it's gonna help me get to know you folks a little bit better here this morning. The name of the game is called That's Me. I'm gonna read a sentence. If the sentence describes you, I just want you to raise your hand and yell, that's me, and put your hand back down again, all right? So it's that, that easy. That's me, hand back down. Now, we're gonna start off with a couple of easy ones just to get you in the flow of things. Here we go. I am into sports. I stink at sports. <laughs> Me too. I am the oldest child. I am the youngest child. I am the favorite child. Good for you. I can play a musical instrument. I love to sing. When I sing, people run. Sorry to hear that. I love video games. I would rather play video games than take a shower. <laughs> That's not good. I have lived in Pennsylvania my entire life. I have visited more than three other states. I have traveled to Iowa. <laughs> Why? I like to read. I like to shop. I like to eat ice cream and watch Netflix. My people, very good. I send at least 10 text messages every day. I send at least 50 text messages every day. I have sent at least one text message since this old dude started talking to us. Shame on you. I have passed gas and blamed it on somebody else. I have passed gas and taken credit for it. I am passing gas right now. Good. I love country music. I love rap music. I love heavy metal music. I love Justin Bieber. I hate Justin Bieber. I am glad to be out of school. Give yourself a round of applause. Very good job. All right, now, what happens if you take a risk at high school and you fall flat on your face? You stink. You know what that means? That means you're normal. Because the fact is, you're not going to be good at everything you try. So the other quality you need to have, if you're going to discover your gift and talent, is a thing called perseverance. Perseverance is when you're taking smart risks, things are not going your way, don't give up on yourself. If you keep making healthy choices, you keep taking smart risks, and you persevere, eventually you will discover your unique talent. Right now, I would like to demonstrate perseverance. And for this, I need five volunteers, five risk takers that know how to whistle. That's all. You just got to know how to whistle. Right here in the blue, very good. All right, in the red there with the glasses, good. In the jacket over there, that's three. We need a couple more here. Where are my leaders here, Westmoreland County? They got to raise their own hand. All right, very good. And I got room for one more. Oh, uh, in the uh, kind of purple shirt over there. Come on down. In the jacket, that'll work. I can do this with six. Yes, young lady, come on down here. 
Hi there. If you will start right about here, face this good looking audience. Perfect. And here she comes on down here. Now, as uh, she makes her way on stage here, I have only one rule for my show. It takes a lot of guts to take a risk and get up in front of all these strangers. So when someone here today is willing to take a risk, would you please welcome them with a very warm round of applause. May you hear it? For our risk takers. If you all take one step back, because I'm going to come across there, uh, before I tell you what it is you have volunteered for, I want to meet you guys and find out a little bit more about you. Hi there, what's your name? CC. CC, and you spell that? C E C E. That's right, you move on to the next round. Very good, CC. Uh, and you are? Sammy. Hi, Sammy, what grade are you in? Eighth grade. Very good. How many years have you been in the eighth grade? One. Good. Your mother and I are very proud of you. That's nice. And you are? Mike. Mike, what school are you representing? Hemfield. Hemfield. Do you feel the love down there? They're not even from there. They just love you that much. That's nice. Uh, and you are? Luke. Hi, Luke. Good to see you. The best dressed man here you are? Christian. Hi, Christian. And last but not least, you are? Nina. Everyone say, hi, Nina. Hi. All right. You six have volunteered to help me teach about perseverance. Our goal this morning is simply to whistle. You all said you could whistle. May I hear them, please? That's lovely. However, with any goal worth having in life, you will often encounter obstacles, things that get in your way that you were not anticipating. Our obstacles this morning, excuse me here, are represented in the form of these delicious 2005 Walmart crackers. I'd like each of you to take three crackers and hold them in your hand. CC three for you, very good. Mike, three for you. Teachers, they're doing very well in the math portion of this exam. Three for you. Christian, three for you, and Nina. Why don't you skip those first couple? Get three good ones there. Now, do any of you have gum? You just swallowed, you just swallowed it? Well, thank you for your commitment. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here you go. Excellent. Now, when I say go, I want you to put all three crackers in your mouth. I want you to chew them up, and the first one to persevere, to hang in there, overcome your obstacles, and reach your goal of whistling is going to receive a lovely prize package just moments from now. Now, Nina? You seem a little uptight about this. So for you, all three of them at the same time, you don't have to digest them. You just have to chew them up. For you, Nina, I brought some whistling mood music, all right? When you hear the music begin, on your mark, get set, blow. This is my favorite part of the show. I get to take a little water break. The water's really good. You ought to have some. What are your thoughts at this point in the competition? Oh, don't laugh. No, no, no. You want to you focus. You want to think saliva. You want to think spit happens. <laughs> Cece, how you doing down here? Can I get you another cracker? You're leaking. Do you know that? <laughs> what? What was that? Good heavens. I can't take you anywhere. Now, Mike, last week we gave away $10,000 in cash, but we can't live in the past. All right, keep going here. Hold your hand up when you think you're close. Would a little peanut butter help? Not really? Okay. Oh, I heard that. Wait, I heard it. Yes, she did it. Yes. Cece, right? You wait right there. You five can head back to your seat. Give them a round of applause if you would, please. Cece, follow me. Welcome to the winner's circle. Now, before I give you your big prize package, Cece, let me ask you, is this the happiest moment of your life? No, it is not. Good. <laughs> I'd be frightened if it were. Now, Cece, you hung in there, you persevered, and for that, you will be rewarded. Are you ready for this? I am. This is so cool. For you today, we have a package of Cracker. No, just kidding. Actually, <laughs> Cece, I've got a gift for you, but there's a little story behind this. My grandfather was a semi-truck driver for more than 40 years, drove all over this country hundreds of times, and Cece he always carried with him for good luck an old-fashioned silver dollar like this one here. The big ones they don't make anymore. My grandpa died a few years ago, and when he did, they found these silver dollar he had carried with him for more than four decades. Both sides of the coin had been worn completely smooth. I've always associated these old silver dollars with good luck, and Cece, I would like you to have this for good luck and safe travels in your future, okay? Let's hear it for Cece, the queen of perseverance. Great job. All right, now, let's say you're like Cece. You've been taking some smart risks, you persevered, and all of a sudden, you have the day. The day where you go, that's it. I was pretty good at that. It's school, it's legitimate, I liked it. What then do you do with that information? 
Well, that's the other thing that high school is all about. It is the perfect place for you to start to take those things you enjoy doing and try to figure out how to turn them into a career someday. Because if you can make a living doing something you enjoy, the odds are you are gonna be incredibly successful. My career pathway began in eighth grade, the night of that talent show. The next day, it took a huge step forward. When I came into school, that teacher was waiting for me with a huge smile on her face. I walked into her class, she said, hey, Good show last night. I said, thanks. She said, uh, the applause felt pretty good, didn't it? I said, yeah, it did. She said, Craig, you want to do this for a job, don't you? Yeah, I do. She said, great. Now we're going to go to work. Huh? She said, if this is your dream, you can get there from here if you work really hard and you make some really good choices. She then gave me a homework assignment that changed my life. She said, Craig, before you write any jokes, I want you to do something. I want you to go down to the library and check out every biography we have on the shelves of the great comedians of the last 100 years. She said, you're not the first one that wants to do this. I want you to research your heroes. Then I want you to report back to me, what did they do right? What did they do wrong? And who are the comedians you want to model your own career after? Now, I figured this reading assignment was going to give me a bunch of ideas for things to do on stage. What I never anticipated, though, was how much it was going to impact my life off stage as well as on. One of the things that I discovered that spring that blew me away was half of the comedians I studied were no longer working because of drugs and alcohol. Half of them had their lives and careers totally destroyed by drugs and alcohol. Names like John Belushi, Chris Farley, Richard Pryor, Sid Caesar, Abbott of Abbott and Costello, Richard Lewis, Sam Kinison, Lenny Bruce. The list went on and on and on. Now, you may not have heard of these old comedians. Every single one of the ones that I just listed in their heyday was a huge superstar. And every single one of those people had their lives and careers totally destroyed by drugs and alcohol. Well, this reading assignment caused me to make a decision as I headed into high school. And that was to stay completely away from drugs and alcohol for the rest of my life. And for me, that decision had nothing to do with a car crash, nothing to do with the tragedy in my family. For me, it was a career decision. Because I knew that not only did I want to do this for a job, but... I wanted to live to tell about it. All right, now it is time to meet some female risk takers. I would like to hold a competition here today, which actually has its roots in my own high school years. Now, this is a little embarrassing for me to admit, but ever since I've been in high school, I've been attracted to young ladies who have really big hair. And now, when I work with students, I like to recognize big hair for the beautiful thing that it is. Some of you may have noticed that behind me this morning, I have five picks, five mirrors, and five bottles of Maximum Hold hairspray. I am looking for five young ladies who can each bring one friend with you, your personal stylist. You're going to go out these doors, and you're going to have five minutes to get your hair as big as humanly possible. Look around you for young ladies with big hair potential. Right there in the glasses, come on up here, very good. Back there with the headband on, that's good. Right here in the second row, that's good. Right here in the plaid, you two. And uh, let's see, I got room for one more team. Over here in the plaid on the, uh, the corner there. Come on up here. Oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> I think this is gonna be worth a drive right here. Oh. Ladies, if you would line up in your teams and face the audience here, I gotta make sure we have five teams here. We have one, two, three, four, five. Very good. All right, here's how this is going to work. When I say go, I want each team to take one pick, one bottle of hairspray, and one mirror. You're going to follow our big hair helpers there. Smile and wave, ladies. They're going to take you out to your very plush dressing room, which we prepared for you. You're going to have five minutes to get your hair as big as humanly possible. When you return, we're going to crown this morning a big hair queen based on three things. Circumference diameter, and overall density. Ladies, go forth and have big hair. Send them out with love, my friends. Let's hear it for your big hair cords. Oh, this is exciting. See you in a few minutes, ladies. Oh. All right. While they're out there, 
I would like to play with you guys my favorite improv game. But before we do this, I have to set the stage. I've been up here today talking about my dreams, my goals, my career pathway. What I want each one of you to do is take 20 seconds, don't discuss this with your neighbor, but I want you to picture your life 20 years from now. Most of you are gonna be in your mid to late 30s, and I want you to picture everything about your life, best case scenario. What are you doing for a job? Are you married? Do you have children? Where are you living? What does your life look like in 20 years? Best case scenario. Are you still living with your parents? Yes, that's their dream too. All right, the name of this game is called Talk Show. I am going to be the host of a future talk show, but I'm missing something. I need a star guest. And that's where one of you is gonna help me out. In just a moment, I'm gonna invite several of you up here on stage, and we're gonna have a little audition. And based on your answers, I'm gonna choose one of you to stay and do the official interview. But there's a catch to this. The person that I choose is not gonna be one of you today. The person that I choose is gonna be one of you 20 years from now, living out your dream that you've had all the way back since you were a high school student, growing up in the great state of Pennsylvania. So you're gonna be in your mid to late 30s, incredibly successful in the career pathway that you have chosen. Now the first people I wanna to talk to, think talk show here, is there anybody here that's interested in a career in either politics, show business, professional athletics, or you want to write a book, something that you might see as a guest. Come on up here. i got room for several of you up here. Who else here? Yes, come on up there, young lady. Good, right here in the gray. This young man in the tie. Very good. we got room for eight or nine if more want to do it. Any artists, any actors, any politicians back there? Very good. In the black shirt with the, uh, the rainbow necklace there, the lanyard. Right here. Yep, you too. Come on up here. Very good. Uh, any athletes out there? Recording artists? All right, this is good. We got room for a couple more. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. May I have a round of applause for these risk takers, everybody? Okay, thank you for coming up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way down the row, and I'm going to ask you guys a couple questions about your career goals. What I'm looking for is a little spark, some enthusiasm, a little creativity. Something says, Craig, I would be an awesome guest on your show. And from all of you, I'm gonna choose one to stay and do the official interview. I'm gonna start on the pretty end down here. Excuse me, I'll be right over here. All right. Uh, what is your name? Andrew. You look a little frightened. Uh, what would you like to do someday? Uh, be a voice actor. Ooh, so would this be for like commercials or for animation? Animation. Do you have, have you ever studied any of the, uh, the, the, the vocal actors like that? Uh, uh, yeah. Do you know who Mel Blanc is? He's, he did Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, all the Warner Brothers ones. He's one of my heroes. Uh, all right, that's very cool. No one's ever uh, given me that answer before. And you are? Brianna. Hi, Brianna. What would you like to do? Um, I'd like to become a famous singer. Really? Now, what kind of music are you into? Pop and country. And do you have, uh, if I could give you tickets to see anyone live in concert from out throughout history, who would you love to see in, uh, in person? Martina McBride. Oh, man, she's awesome. My wife just saw her. It was a great concert. And you are? Ben Zibioski. My, that's a mouthful. And uh, um, what would you like to do? I, uh, I'd like to run for mayor. Really? Of what town? Uh, Manessin. Manessin, very good. So it would be Zibioski from Manessa. Is that right? Something like that? That would be a great bumper sticker. All right. Uh, why do you want to be mayor? Um, I, it, the town needs fixed up. Okay. So are you thinking like aluminum siding everywhere or shag carpet? What, what, when you say fixed up, what are you envisioning? Um, it, it's like, it's, it's heavily, there's a lot of people that use drugs in it. Okay. And, and it's a really run down community and I think it can be repaired if, if there's honestly a couple of people that really care about it. And I want to be one of those people. Cool. Well, you know what? You're in the right spot on the right day. That's great. We're glad you're here. That's exactly what we were hoping uh, people like you would be here today. That's very cool. And you are? Allison. Allison, you have big hair potential, Allison. You could have been a contender. Uh, what would you like to do? A dance, professionally. Oh, now, what kind of dance are you into? I do all of them. Tap, hip hop, all that different stuff? Yeah. Do you have a favorite? Um, tap. Can you clog? No. <laughs> <laughs> not on purpose. All right, and last but not least, you are? Michael Dunlap. Michael, I've got bad news for you. At this rate, you'll never be the big hair queen. Are you okay with that? 
I guess. So. Strong, Michael. And uh, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to compose music and run for U.S. Senate. Compose music? Now, those are two completely different career fields. What kind of music are you into? Um, I like Broadway music and uh, classical music. And do you have a favorite Broadway show of all time? Uh, Les Mis. Mine too. I love that. We just listened to that this last weekend. And uh, <laughs> see, we could dance with you. Do, do, do you sense the raw talent right here next to you? And, uh, and uh, Senate, do you want to run as a Democrat or Republican? Democrat. Democrat. Okay, very good. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one vote right there. <laughs> good luck to you. Uh, well, I tell you what, all of these answers are intriguing to me, but I think I'm going to, oh man, this is really hard. I think my instincts say I'm going to go with, Michael, will you stay and be my guest? There's something about you that don't, that, that, I'll put that down as a yes. Thank you very much. You four are awesome. You can head back to your seat. Another round of applause for those four. Michael, wait right there. Sit right behind you here. Michael, we have to do a little homework. On every show, they do what's called a pre-show interview. So I need to ask you a couple questions so I'll know what to talk about when you come out for the big taping. What is your last name? Dunlap. Michael Dunlap, okay. And Michael, in 20 years, how old will you be? I will be 38. How old are you now? I'm going to be 18 in a month, so. So we're gonna round up, and, yeah. and you have to stop doing that. Okay, very good, all right. <laughs> 38 years old. <laughs> All right, here's the deal, Michael. Uh, I'm going to send you off over there, and you're going to gather your thoughts. And when you come back, you are no longer Michael Dunlap, 17 years and 11 months old. You are now 38 years old. I'm going to give you that bonus month. And uh, you have just finished up uh, an incredibly successful run on Broadway, okay? And because of your popularity on Broadway, your home state of Pennsylvania has just elected you in an overwhelming election to the Senate, okay? So uh, my show is your last stop on the way to Washington, D.C., but you're coming from New York where you just played another sold-out performance last night. I want to talk to you a little bit about your uh, Broadway career. And I also want to talk to you about your campaign. What was your message that was so successful with uh, uh, the voters in Pennsylvania? Uh, I may ask you about your personal life. Are you married? Do you have children? That type of thing. I may even ask you to do a song from one of your favorite Broadway shows, okay? But, Michael, these people are your biggest fans. And they cannot believe they're here on the same night that the Michael Dunlap is here. And they are going to go nuts when you walk out of the stage because you are Michael Dunlap, superstar. Okay, head over there. Give him a little encouragement, if you would. All right, now, you all need to use your imagination. You've got to pretend we've already done the opening segment of the show, the monologue. We'll say that was the homeboy scout, the first couple of bits I did. We've gone to a commercial break, and when we come back, we're ready for the second segment of the show. That's when we bring out Michael, our big star guest. Now, you all will be playing the part of the studio audience. You've watched enough television to know what that means. That means that when I bring up Michael or the big hair court, if you would erupt with as much enthusiasm as you can, it'll be great for my ratings. All right, Michael, sit tight, okay? Because I got to introduce you by name. Got to open up the segment. First of all, we got to get ready for you here. Get your stool ready. Make sure the hair piece is on straight. Perfect. All right. <laughs> we are back in five, four, three, two, one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. What a great studio audience. Now, if you're watching at home tonight and wondering why is this crowd so gosh darn fired up, well, it's because they know that we are just moments away from crowning yet another big hair queen for all of America. But before we do that, I want to bring out a young man that I've been trying to get on this show for the last five years. Not only is he the king of Broadway, he is now on his way to Washington, D.C., thanks to a historic election. I happen to be his biggest fan. Ladies and gentlemen, I just blanked on the name. <laughs> That's impressive. Would you please welcome the one and only Michael Dunlap. Come on out here, Michael. They love you. Welcome to the show. Have a seat right there. Now, may I be the first to address you as Senator Dunlap? You can. Yes. All right. Now, uh, Senator, you get that uh, reaction wherever you go, whether it's on a Broadway stage or you're doing a campaign stop. Um, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel happy because I am doing what, I would, what I've always wanted to do. 
and I'm trying to change the world through um, politics and Song and dance. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, I wanna, before we talk about uh, your campaign, which was an amazing campaign you put together, I want to talk to you about this show you just finished up on Broadway. For those of you who couldn't get to New York, what show was it that you starred in? I was in Les Mis. Oh, I love that one. And the role you played? I played Javert. Oh, oh that's the bad dude. Yeah, it is. But see, that's what it is. <laughs> and, and you seem to really enjoy that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of that uh, performance here in a few minutes, but uh, uh, what did you enjoy about being on Broadway? I love working with other people, and I love connecting with them, so connecting with my cast was amazing. Very good. And I was reading, not only uh, are you an actor, a singer, uh, uh, now a politician, you're also an author, and uh, your um, autobiography is number one right now in the New York Times best-selling list, um, not done with Dunlap. And in it, you talk about <laughs> you wanted to be an actor and a senator since you were like in high school. Where did you attend high school? Uh, Greater Latrobe High School. In Pennsylvania? Yes. We got some folks from Pennsylvania here tonight, is that right? <laughs> Looking back, was there one teacher that really helped get your career off on the right foot? Uh, Mr. Crack. And you know what, I think we have, is he here? That's right, we went. That's right, he's in the nursing home. He's 86 years old. Uh, we'll get him a tape of this. He's very proud of you, Michael. Uh, uh, how old are you these days? I am 38. 38, very good. And uh, are you married? I am. And uh, what's your wife's name? My wife's name is um, um, Arcadia. <laughs> what a hallmark moment that was. Arcadia. How long have you and Arcadia been married? Uh, 10 years. Any children? Uh, no. Okay, so we'll make sure they were less than 10. You're doing great so far, Michael. All right. Now, uh, the campaign, what was your message that really connected with the voters this year? Because what, what percentage of the popular vote did you receive? 52. 50, even your opponent voted for you, I understand. Uh, yes, he did. <laughs> he didn't like himself. He didn't like himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty deep. We won't get into that. Uh, Michael, what was your message that connected with the voters? Um, well, I wanted to get rid of poverty in the state of Pennsylvania, so when I would preach about poverty in all the neighborhoods that were poor in the state, um, I think that really got to them. I think that they thought that I had a good solution for, um, for solving the issue. And your solution was, you made so much money on Broadway, you're just going to write all those people checks, is that right? Correct. Very good, very good. <laughs> now, Michael, uh, I know the orchestra isn't here, and we don't have the whole cast, but I would love to hear him sing a little bit from Les Mis. Would you guys like to hear this? Can, is there... Can you do a verse of maybe one of uh, Javert's songs? I suppose. Uh, is there a song you'd rather do than uh, one from Les Mis? Um, my friends? Yes. Would you like to suggest something? Oh. Well, oh. Free bird. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick with Javert. <laughs> All right, and now performing the song that he made famous from Les Miserables, the one and only Michael Dunn. There, out in the darkness, a fugitive running, fallen from God, fallen from grace. God be my witness, I never shall yield till we come face to face, till we come face to face. He knows his way in the dark, Mine is the way of the Lord. Those who follow the path of the righteous shall have their reward. And if you fall as Lucifer fell, the flames, the sword. You know, I talk about risk-taking, but he just did that at 9 o'clock in the morning without warming up, a cappella in a room full of strangers. You, Michael Dunlap, are the man. That was incredible. Wow. That was awesome. Well, finally, Michael, so many young people look up to you for the role model you've obviously become. What advice would you give to those millions of teens watching tonight that will help them be as successful as you've been? Do what you want. Don't do what people tell you to do. I know high schools and 
people focus on STEM related fields, but don't always listen to them unless you really like that kind of thing. Don't, don't always listen to them. You can get a job in whatever you want to. You are awesome. Will you come back and visit us uh, while you're a senator? I will. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Dunlap. <laughs> Great job. You guys, that is so hard to do. He just knocked it out of the park. Give Michael another round of applause. Great job. All right, my friends, and now the moment you've all been waiting for. Would you please welcome your big hair court? Ladies, come on down. Making their way down the long corridor. Sometimes their hair is so big it gets stuck in the doorway. It'll be worth the wait. Oh, yes. <laughs> Give it up for these ladies. They did it for you. Yes! <laughs> That's two. The other three were abducted, apparently. Oh, here they come. Make them feel welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're a big hair court. The hair is up and it is good. Oh. <laughs> Ladies, let me be the first to say you have never looked more beautiful than you do right now. <laughs> Stylish, you get an A+. Plus. You can put the pics in the mirrors and the hairspray back on the table. And Stylish can head back to your seat. How about a round of applause for our Stylish? They did a great job. Thank you, Stylish. And contestants, if you will scoot together as closely as your hair will allow. Now, before I present one of you ladies with the crown, I need to have a moment with you, the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, being crowned the big hair queen is an honor one of these young ladies will carry with them the rest of their living days. I'm gonna ask each young lady to introduce herself, step forward, then spin once. Then I want you to vote by applause for the contestant of your choice. The one who receives the most applause will get the coveted crown and title of your big hair queen. We're gonna start right down here. Hello there, what's your name? Destiny. Destiny, and this is your Destiny. Man for number one, Destiny, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lovely, and, uh, <laughs> and your name? Maya. Apparently it's a little windy in your corner of the restroom. Number two, Maya, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be tough. And, uh, <laughs> and your name? Hannah. You kind of remind me of a lava lamp I had in college. Number three, <laughs> Hannah, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my, and what is your name? Rissa. Uh, Rissa, you look familiar and yet you've done something different with yourself. Number four, Rissa, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> they went nuts, you just had a lot of hairspray in your ears. And last but not least, <laughs> is this the front here? Oh yeah. <laughs> what is your name? Abby. Abby, you remind me of my favorite song. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. Ch -ch 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 -chia. Ch -ch -ch -chia. <laughs> Number five, Abby, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh. It's very close, but up here it sounded like one of them had a slight edge. Therefore, would you please welcome your big hair queen, contestant number two, Maya, step on down here. You wait right there, you fork it back to your seat, just be glad it's not a real school day. Oh, Maya, we're not done with you, my friend. If you'd have a seat right here on your throne. Maya, we move now to what has become known as the big hair coronation ceremony. We have a couple things for you today as you begin your reign as the big hair queen. We have the cape representing beauty and patriotism. Yes, no, it's on your shoulders. And the very prestigious crown representing royalty. <laughs> and now would you all please join me in the singing of the big hairy anthem. It is sung to the tune, you are my sunshine, and indeed today Maya. You are our sunshine. Here we go, friends, from the top with feeling. You are the hair queen, the reigning hair queen. You make us happy when your hair is tall. You'll never know, dear, how much we love you. Please don't let your hair do fall. Second verse, my turn the other day, dear, when it was windy. Your hair did not move or crack Thanks to some mousse and six cans of hairspray And a coat or two of shellac One more time! You want to keep it rolling! The rainy hair queen You make us happy when your hair is soft You'll never know, dear, how much we love you 
to let your hair do. I need your hand. You'll never know, dear, how much we love you. Police don't let your hair do fall. You're Queen Maya! One more round of applause for Maya. She's beautiful. <laughs> Folks, whatever you do this morning, do not get near any of those girls with a match. You will blow us all sky high. <laughs> you know what? I love my job, but my job is not the best part of my life. I'd like to show you the best part of my life. I am married to my favorite person in this whole world. Her name is Heidi. We've been married for 25 years now, and she is an incredibly hardworking second grade public school teacher in Indiana where we live. And we are the proud parents of three daughters, and you've got a cue coming up here. I want to hear the big sappy, ah. This is the best part of my life. Thank you very much. That's Heidi right there. On your far right is Katie. Katie is a sophomore this year at Purdue University. Over here on your left is Carrie. Carrie's a junior this year in high school. And batting cleanup is Emma. Emma is a freshman this year. And Heidi and I love being the parents of these three girls. And I want you to see them before we were all done. Now, I got to tell you why I am doing a show at 8.30 in the morning at a beautiful community college in Pennsylvania instead of getting ready to do a show in a comedy club in New York, Chicago, LA, someplace like that. In the 1990s, my career pathway took me to comedy clubs around the country. I was doing okay, but I seemed to be having the same frustrating conversation every night when I walked off stage with either the club manager or the club owner. The last time this conversation took place was Cape Cod, Ma Massachusetts. I did my show, walked off stage, and the manager made a beeline for me. She said, Craig, we need to talk right now. What? What is the problem? She said, you have got to dirty up your act. I said, but they were laughing. She said, you need to learn something. This is a comedy club. We do not make our money off the sound of laughter. We make our money off the sale of alcohol. We want these people drinking a lot. Drunk crowds do not want clean material. You need either dirty up your act or get out. I was furious. I went back to the hotel room. Heidi was with me on this trip. This was long before the girls came into our lives. I said, Heidi, I don't want to do this anymore. She said, but you've wanted to be a comedian since you were in high school. I said, no. I don't want to base the fact that the only way I can be successful is to come up with a bunch of rotten material for a room full of people whose behavior I don't respect in the first place. She said, okay, you've got some thinking to do. Well, we went home and I narrowed my options down to three. You guys always have options in life. Option number one was, I can dirty up my act. I know all those words, I know all those body parts. Most fifth graders can write the bulk of that material. But I didn't feel comfortable with those words coming out of my mouth, especially in public. Option number two was, I could quit. And I came that close to doing it. And then Heidi said, wait a minute, maybe there's a d different direction that you can take than from what everyone else says you have to do. And ultimately, option number three is the one I chose. I decided to see if I could still find audiences in America who want clean stand-up comedy. And now I do about 200 shows a year in schools, in churches, and for corporate groups. And that decision has brought me to California, to New York, up to Maine, down to Texas, over to Florida, and ultimately it brought me here today to be with you guys. And whether you realize it or not, you are better than any comedy club crowd I'd have anywhere in America tonight. You guys are smart, you're friendly, and you're sober. All three qualities I find very attractive. Now, when you guys think about who you want to be, what you want to do, where you want to go, realize you're going to make a million little decisions in the next couple years that are going to largely determine which doors open for you and which doors close for you. Because you're in high school, you already know that one of the decisions you're going to have to make virtually every weekend has to do with drugs and alcohol. And if you guys think the, the pressure's intense now, <laughs> wait till you get to college. It will be off the charts. For those of you who have already made the decision, you know that drugs and alcohol are going to have no part of your present and no part of your future. The only thing I can tell you is you will never regret that decision. It is impossible to regret that decision. And for those of you who aren't quite there yet, I would ask you to consider it. 
My experience has been if you dream really big, you work really hard, and you make really good choices, it can be a wonderful life. I have spent the last 30 years trying to prove to high school students you don't need drugs and alcohol to have an awesome time. I'm going to attempt to do it one more time right now. Uh, I've saved my favorite routine for the end here, but for this, I need your help. I'm looking for some more students, and this time, two criteria. You, you gotta love to dance, and you gotta like to win stuff, all right? That's what I'm looking for. Do we have any students here that like to dance, and you like to win stuff? And I'm looking for a bit, bunch of you up here. Red's good, come on up here, that's good. And you can bring your friends with you if you want. Uh, back there, there, come on up, good. Over here, this young lady, good. Uh, you wanna do it there on the corner? She's pointing at you. I need some guys up here too. We're a little heavy on estrogen up here. Do we have any stuff? Uh, this young lady, you wanna do it? Come on up here. Where, I need, a yes, all right, in the suit and tie there. I need a couple of real men out there to come on up here. Do I have any guys that like to win cool prizes? How about any, right here in the second row, there's got, can, are there two of you that'll come up together? All right, this guy, come on up, good, that's good. He was up here early, Mr. Mayor. This young lady, and I got room for one more. One more, you wanna do it? Come on up here, very good. All right, I'm gonna try and make this as safe as I can up here. All right. As the last two make their way on up here, may I have a round of applause for these risk takers, everybody. All right, now. Let me explain how this is gonna work. Uh, I love dance music, and I have put together one three-minute mix which features 15 of my all-time favorite dance songs. We're about to do 15 songs in three minutes. I'm gonna give you a little clue, and then the music will begin, and I want you to go with whatever dance moves pop into your mind, as long as they are school appropriate. No twerking, I'm talking to you, young man, all right? <laughs> now. Don't overthink this, because each song just lasts like seven seconds, then we're on to the next one. Save your best moves till the end, because on the last song, you get to really show off your best stuff. And when it's all over, I'm gonna choose the one of you who I think got into it the most, and that student's gonna win a really cool prize. Now, my experience has been, the more you cheer, the better they will dance. So how about a little encouragement for these folks? Dancers, are we ready up here? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. All right, I'm going to uh, step right back here. Quick drink of water. All right, we are going to begin with a little Beyonce. Take it away. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Now put your hands up. Gangnam Style. Well, I'm Gangnam Style. You make me wanna shout. You know you make me wanna shout. Kick my heels up and shout. Throw my hands up and shout. Throw my head back and shout. Come on now, say. Hammer time. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Stop. Pokey pokey. You put your right hand in. You put your right hand out. You put your right hand in and you shake it all about. And you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Nay, nay. Now watch me whip. Hey, now watch me nay, nay. Okay. Now watch me whip. Whip. Watch me nay, nay. Disco. Hey, 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 hey,
are all these dancers? Oh, yeah, it's down there. That's too bad. Oh. <laughs> All right, this is a really difficult decision because my eyes just kept going back and forth. There were about three times you just looked like you'd been tased. Uh, but there was one student, my eyes just kept going back time and time again, so I'm very proud today to crown a dance king. Ladies and gentlemen, the man right here. Step on up here. What is your name, sir? Sammy. Sammy, and uh, I've got something for you because of your outstanding uh, presentation here today. You, my friend, have just won dinner for two Thanks to the lovely people at Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Congratulations. Let's hear it for all these great dancers. You guys can head back to your seat. Very good job. Uh, so, that's my story. I've been up here talking the last hour about my road to coming here with you this morning. The really cool thing that I know is, is that every single one of you has a unique story that has brought you here to this Youth Summit today. What I'm hoping is that you will take your cue from all the students that got up here today, and you're going to be willing to take a risk today and step outside your comfort zone and sh start to share your story. Uh, what I do know is that the students back in your local high schools are absolutely hungry for people to lead them. And they are not interested so much in what you have to say, but in what you're doing. Um, my idea on leadership is there are really three effective ways to lead. By example, by example, and by example. And the students in your building, when you go back on Monday, they're going to watch what you do far more than they are going to listen to what you say. Today, we are here about starting to do a little brainstorming and learning from other people's stories and starting to come up with some ideas, hopefully, that you will feel compelled to bring back to your own high, uh, local high school so that you can start to improve that building and uh, the larger community around it. We've got some wonderful adults that have volunteered their time to come in today and facilitate that process. And if you all are as good to them as you've been to me today, uh, this should be a really productive and fun day. I will be here all day long. I'm looking forward to visiting with you guys. Uh, and so um, um, hopefully we'll get a chance to shake hands and uh, say good morning or good afternoon at some point. But to tell you exactly what happens next, would you please welcome back to the stage the woman of the hour, the tower of power, too sweet to be sour, your friend and mine, the lovely Miss Jamie. Give it up for her. Round of applause for Craig. That was awesome, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> Very fun to watch. Thank you. Okay, I am really excited about what you folks are about to see. You know, I mentioned over in the auditorium that everyone has a story uh, that it brought them here today. Sometimes other people's choices have a tremendous impact on our life, and sometimes it's our own choices that lead us down either a good road or uh, a road that isn't quite so pleasant. These two gentlemen that I'm going to introduce to you today both have unique stories um, and they've also taken their unique talents and are connecting with students in a really, really cool way. Uh, and so I am very pleased to introduce to you now. Uh, this gentleman here is Jim Donovan. This gentleman here is Carmen Capozzi. If you give them both a big round of applause, you're going to like this. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, this is amazing. I never thought this is where I'd be running a drum circle. I lost my son Sage to an overdose. He was 20 years old um, in 2012. And um, you know, you uh, got a lot to deal with, a lot of things to think of. Well, um, I couldn't be quiet. I started a group called Sage's Army to break the stigma, to knock down barriers, you know, um, different things. But um, one of the things that I had the pleasure of uh, happening was meeting this gentleman, Jim. Um, I spoke at his children's high school and his daughter. And, um, you know, I got Dave Mineta from the White House sitting there. We got Kathleen Kennedy, Attorney General. And then I seen Jim Donovan in the audience, front row, and I went, oh man, that's Jim Donovan. Because I'm a drummer, and you know, anyways, he inspired me. He called me and said, hey man, come sit in one of my drum circles. And um, 
I've been blessed to sit through his facilitator class and become a facilitator now and working with people in recovery, working with children. And um, so, oh, I'm sorry. So here we are today. And um, I'm gonna let Jim say a few things and tell who you are. So here's Jim. Great, thank you very much. Let's give a big round of applause. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me like this? Yeah, you guys can hear me back there. Yeah, not really. Not, not really. Kind of hard, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go. I'll go back and forth between uh, this this lovely microphone. So what what Carm what Carm didn't tell you is that his his organization Sage's Army is pushing back against opioid addiction here in Westmoreland County. Uh, what he didn't tell you is that he's an advocate for getting uh, it's, it's called Narcon, right? Yeah, so to get it, getting more availability to the to, to helping people that, that are overdosing still stay on the planet. So I really want to give this guy a big round of applause. It's very important work that he does. So first thing is, uh, even though we've got a, a, a wonderful circle of volunteers here, the things that we're going to do in the next few minutes together are things that, that everybody can participate in. And I want to encourage and invite you to, to really be present with, uh, with us for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, so I, uh, I'm, I'm, I live in Greensburg now. Uh, I spent about 15 years on the road with a band called Rusted Root. Maybe some of your parents might know our, our group. So if, all the parents are, and the kids going, Who? Yeah. So if you ever saw the movie Ice Age, uh, we have a song in the movie Ice Age. Uh, I work, uh, I'm now a professor at St. Francis University. I teach music and wellness. I do a lot of work with people with autism, as well as uh, work at a place called Maryland Recovery about once a month, helping people who are healing from uh, many different kinds of addiction. And what we're gonna experience here is just a little taste of some of the things that I do with people in recovery, but also people in general populations. Some of the things that we'll do are things I do with Fortune 500 companies and team building uh, and anxiety relief. The big things that we're gonna hit today together uh, are Anxiety relief. What what can we do immediately to get out of anxiety? Um, we're going to get, in, get into just a little bit of creative expression, and um, the way we're going to begin is I'm going to ask everyone just to stand up. Please stand up. Will you get your hands, put them together, and rub them, rub them together, get them nice and warm? Will you turn to the people beside you and around you, look at them in the eye? and say good morning to them and shake their hands. Good morning. Good morning. Introduce yourselves to each other. Introduce yourselves to each other. All right, fantastic. Go ahead and have a seat. Have a seat. Now, we've got these crazy drums here. I've been doing, I've been drumming for, for a long, long time. Uh, when I first started teaching this, I thought that I was teaching people music, which, which I do. What I realized is that, that what, what's, what's possible here and what, what scientific research is telling us is that we can use what we're about to do to help people that feel disconnected. We can use what we're about to do to help people feel like they've got a voice in something in a world where even though we're connected via, via our texting and our, and our technology, uh, there's this pandemic of people that feel isolated and alone. So this is a way that we're gonna use music to bring anybody who's willing into the experience. So what you don't need in this, guys and, and girls, is any experience. You don't need to be good at it for it to be helpful. All right, so uh, let's, give, let's give our volunteers a round of applause. Just to give them a support here. It's rare to come up in the middle of the circle, and I appreciate that. All right. So, the drums I brought, these are African drums. They're called djembe, and uh, I'm going to show you how to play them, how to hold them. So go ahead and grab your drums, bring them over to you. The drums that have uh, these orange ones, they just stand there, right? You don't have to do anything special, but bring them close to you. The drums that look more like mine, uh, and anything with wood, with wood, you want to sit up the edge of your seat and tilt forward. Okay, come try this. Come on. I got one extra buddy here. Let me see your right hands. Fingers go together, thumb goes against the hand, hand stays nice and flat. Put your hand on the drum. Wrist goes over the edge like this. I want you to bounce it like a ball. 
Be very careful not to hit the edge so you don't hurt your hands. And we're going to use just half of the hand. Use the wrist like a hinge. So the low one's called bass, the high one's called tone. So bass, tone, bass, tone. Follow along with me. So bass, tone, bass, tone. Got it? Now you know how to play these things. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get your brains and your hands working together. I want you to feel, uh, I want you to play what you think you hear. Okay? Watch for my signal because I changed the pattern. We're going to try to get the hands and brains working together. Here's the first one. give yourself a different experience. I, I would like you to close your eyes. <laughs> Control freaks, let's take a breath. <laughs> right? And the job is just to play what you think you hear without peeking. Ready? Here's the first one. Close your eyes.
couple of breaths together. Do your best to follow along. seconds and quiet. <clears throat> when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes, rub your hands together. I'm wondering if you can remember how your mind was feeling when you were walking in the room today, and this goes for everybody, and compare it to now. What if anything, uh, let me ask this first, how many feel that something feels different up here right now? Something, I feel different somehow. A bunch of you, okay. Uh, what's, what's changed for you up, up in the mind? What do you notice? So you're feeling one way when you came in, and now what's happening? Yeah. More, more relaxed. Anybody else get more relaxed from that? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain why. There's a, there's a scientific reason. Yeah, what do you notice? I feel lighter. Oh, like I felt heavier. Feel lighter. Like your energy's lighter and just, yeah. Perfect. Good. Yeah. I'm less nervous. Less nervous. Great. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. More peaceful. More peaceful. Did anyone notice that their mind feels a little clearer? Let me, see, let me see how many. Let me just see. Is that your normal state? Yeah. If, if so, congratulations. Yeah. It's, it's a tough one. I run into people all over the country and in Europe where I, I teach all over the place. And one of the things that we all share in common is that our minds <clears throat> are overloaded. We have so much going on, our lists, our worries, whatever those things are. The intensity of the world uh, is pretty incredible. I know that there's a lot about the world I can't change. I can't control, even though I really want to. One thing I can control is my reaction to anything, anything that I experience. What I just showed you is a way to take your brain out of anxiety. And we did it using this, this, this little, I call it a brain hack. This thing that the brain uh, will repeat and do anytime you need it to. <clears throat> which is, I give the brain a pattern, which is four taps per second. So right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And what we know about this is that the brain has this thing in it. It's called the, or this thing that it does. It's called the frequency following response. And what that means is that the brain starts to follow the pattern. Much like you would follow like a song and like move your head back and forth to a song that you like, right? The frequency following response makes, makes it so that when, the, when a pattern starts, the brain goes, pattern, nice. <laughs> and it keeps following it until the pattern stops. You with me? So what's cool about this is that if we know that the brain will do that, the other thing we know is that if we tap four taps per second, this has the effect of slowing the speed of your brain waves down. And when you do this, friends, that's what happens when you start to relax. The brain wave starts to slow down. When you're having an anxiety attack, panic attack, if we had an EEG on your brain, it would be real fast wave, like super spiky. What we just did is grab your wave from wherever it was, locked it onto a pattern, 
and helped it to slow down. So if you felt relaxed, if you felt clearer, if you felt even sleepy, that means that it worked. This is something you can repeat any time you're having stress. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, we're, we have a pandemic of anxiety. And one thing I know from working in a recovery center is that the, the overwhelming majority of these folks use because they can't deal with their anxiety. They don't know how no one showed them. A lot of them have ADD, ADHD. A lot of them come from trauma backgrounds, right? Lots and lots of anxiety. Like I said, we can't control all the things that cause anxiety, but we can control our reaction to it. This is one way. Move your hands four taps per second and breathe slowly. Does that make sense? It's a strange little thing. And yet, I use this every night before going to sleep. I suffer from anxiety. Uh, not anymore, actually, because I know this. But for me, I would lay in bed at night with the loop of thoughts. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I think of the same thing over and over again. This, if you have that, just start this. Do it for at least two minutes. This will blow the loop up and help you to relax and get to sleep. Yeah? If that's the only thing that you learned today from me, uh, this is a lifelong companion. You can use this, you can teach it to people, teach it to your friends who are freaking out, right? Who's, whose friends are freaking out like all the time? Yeah, all of them, all, everybody's freaking out. <laughs> Calm down, start tapping and breathe. It works. You with me? All right, so we're gonna do just, uh, we have two quick things here. We're gonna create some music together, so bring your drums up. We have this, uh, we have this, this little method of making music together where Carmen's gonna start a rhythm and we're gonna play whatever the heck we want. If uh, on your on your on your tables, if you want to like like gently hit the tables without breaking them, you can drum along with us. Here's our job: play whatever you want. Do your best to make the group sound good. <laughs>
Just hang out for a second. Yeah, because you can put your drums out. That's fine. Yeah. So let's take a breath, please. Let it go. Rub your hands together. People in the circle, turn to your friends and shake their hands and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're interested, you can find uh, you can find Sage's Army online, sagesarmy.com. Right? You can find me on Instagram, it's Jim Donovan and Sun King Warriors, which is my band. Come follow me. And uh, I hope I get to see you guys again sometime. Thank you very much, and I'll turn it over to our friend. I want to say one thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Colleen, and the Dragon Alcohol Commission for these drums and for believing in the idea of this, you know. Love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello everyone, I am here with two students from South Moreland High School. I have Brandon and I have Olivia. Thank you to the two of you here for being with us as we're at the West Moreland Youth Summit. So thoughts so far today? I'm having a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun and they're teaching us a lot of information in an interesting way. All right, so I know the two of you both got to participate as volunteers for the event. Uh, the one that we just saw and that you just saw was the drums, uh, drum circle here. How did you like it? I liked it a lot, actually. I was a little skeptical at first going up there, but once I, once I got up there and started playing, I had a lot of fun. It was, it was a great time. So what's your big takeaway from that? Because it wasn't just about playing the drums. Um, well, I liked, uh, I liked how he said about uh, it's, a, it's a stress reliever and it, it, it relaxes you, and I think I can implement that into my own life and, and, and uh, people around me, I guess. <laughs> nice, having a positive impact on you know, people's why we're here today. And Olivia, you were on stage with the comedian. Yep, I was called up for a dance contest and I didn't win, but I had a lot of fun and he showed that you don't have to do drugs to have fun. All right, so the two of you are gonna go back with your fellow classmates here today to do a grant writing to implement something in the high school. Is the brain starting to work on uh, an idea of what you guys would like to do? Yeah, we're probably going to have something like a, just a positive decision making fair in which we call in people who can bring um, impaired vision goggles, they bring in trucks and stuff, and they bring in people from insurance companies to tell us about how we can prevent problems on the road and with alcohol. And then they, we heard of another idea called the Polar Palooza, in which we hosted either on a weekend or on like a Friday night when kids could be out doing, having parties or doing bad things. And they're actually at the school having sports events and just having a lot of fun. Awesome. And I know the two of you are not seniors, correct? No. All right. So I hope to see this program be super successful. Uh, I actually have the privilege of working with the two of you and the rest of your classmates as I will be the sponsor for South Moreland. So I can't wait to work with you guys. I wish you the best and thank you for being here today because we don't need another statistic. So the work that all of you and the other students here today do to help prevent those people, that's, that's why we're here. All right, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're here with a student from Mount Pleasant. I'm going to let her introduce herself. I'm Hannah. Hi Hannah, welcome and hope you're enjoying your day here so far at Westmoreland Community College for the Youth Summit. Talk to us, what do you think so far about this day? Really touching, a great opportunity. Um, I've just, I've changed my perspective a lot and really got to me. So before we go into the uh, emotional side, let's go into the uh, early part of the day you were on stage your hair looked like a mess yeah it was it's really naughty right now <laughs> I couldn't comb it out that's hilarious but all right so the next part that you guys did was a breakout session talk to us about it well um, it was about drunk driving it was really heartfelt and it just just really touching <laughs> and it's scary to think about but it's definitely opened my eyes now, I know that working with all of you at Mount Pleasant High School, you have a couple events coming up. Seeing what's going on today, does that help give more ideas for what you're all trying to do for your students? Definitely, just expand their knowledge of abuse of substances and... Not creating another statistic. <laughs> exactly. So. I know that you guys have your mock car crash accident coming up in May and you also have a health fair coming up and everyone seems pretty excited. 
I'm definitely excited just to reach out to students more and, like I said, expand the knowledge of abuse. Are you guys having any ideas yet to use the grant? Mm, not yet. That I haven't heard of, but we'll see what happens. Well, that's the rest of the day. So thanks for being with us, and I hope you've taken something away today. Thanks.